All right, what up? It's Leonidas here coming in from Sao Paulo, Brazil. And I've been living now here for about two months. I'm currently on top of the Mac Museum. So the Contemporary Arts Museum. I'm going to explain to you my experience of being here, living here for two months, the pros, the cons, the health, wealth, relationship, and happiness as well my experiences, my story of coming here, and everything else in between. So nonetheless, I actually have been living now in Brazil in three different cities over the course of approximately two years or so. Initially, I came to Brazil, lived in Rio de Janeiro. So then I left and I came back to live in the northeast coast of Brazil in a city called Recife. And then after Recife, went down to the south of Brazil to live in a city called Curitiba, which most people would recommend as the most livable city in Brazil. So nonetheless, I've been living here now in Sao Paulo for two months and everything that I described is going to be my personal experiences, my opinions, some things I obviously won't explain too much, but other things I will explain as much as possible. So the story goes is that after living in Brazil for quite some time, one of the cities that I tried to avoid for some time was Sao Paulo because I was here in 2016 and the city itself was ginormous, absolutely enormous. It is a concrete jungle and the jungle itself, the trees are the skyscrapers, the canopies all around the city. So any direction that you look at will have thousands upon thousands of skyscrapers all going up into the sky this is simply because it's not earthquake prone so that's why the city here goes up into the sky as unreasonably and as randomly as possible unlike mexico city for example which is prone to earthquakes where i lived for a little bit more than a year here in sao paulo there's no earthquakes so the buildings essentially jot out into the air and it's absolutely a phenomenal phenomenal thing to see if you've never seen something like this before so I came here for four days to Sao Paulo back in 2016. I didn't really experience that much. Walked around a few areas in the center, but didn't really get to experience much of Sao Paulo. And I thought to myself, well, one day I have to come back here to Sao Paulo to really experience it. Now the pros and cons of living here in Sao Paulo. So the pros, there's an overabundance of museums. There's a couple museums that I really enjoyed. One of them was called the Museo Itaú Cultural, so the Itaú Cultural Museum. And if you go on the fourth and fifth floor, they actually show paintings of various parts of Brazil around 200 to 300 years ago. For myself, I like to see history of a country many hundreds of years ago of what the city would have essentially looked like a long time ago. On the lower floors, you will find some more contemporary art and history exhibits as well. the Santander Tower. So it's a tower in the very, very center of the city. And then you can basically go up all the way to the top and you have a view of the concrete jungle from the very center of the city itself, right literally from the center of the city. This building was also the central bank of the state of Sao Paulo between 1938 and 1947. Inside, you will find a museum dedicated to the banking area of that time. Also, there are several other floors that feature more contemporary art exhibitions as well, such as for virtual reality or a space exhibit. Within walking distance from Santander Tower is the Anchieta Church, or the Igreja São José de Anchieta. And then next to it is a section that shows what Sao Paulo was like 500 years ago, and then it ultimately shows the evolution of the city over time. So imagine all of this was just nature previously, and then over time it evolved into a massive, massive jungle of concrete, as I like to say. Also within walking distance of the Santander Tower is a massive market district. During the weekends, you can come here to buy pretty much anything up for sale within Sao Paulo. Keep in mind, it is very crowded, so be mindful of your belongings against any pickpockets. Mm -hmm. 
Within the same market district is the absolutely enormous Mercado Municipal G São Paulo. Inside, you will find a massive array of foods, trinkets, and memorabilia for sale. You can also sit down for a drink and eat at any number of the popular restaurants, although they are busy most of the time. Within a short distance from the municipal market is the Museo do Casa Vento. It's a gorgeous castle-like building which features a science museum inside. Keep in mind the majority of the exhibits are only in Portuguese, but you can still visit for the intrigue and fun. While walking around the downtown core, I stumbled upon the São Paulo Consolation Cemetery, or the Cemiterio da Consolação. The cemetery is densely packed with beautifully carved tombstones and mausoleums, each with their own interesting design, characteristics, history, context, and curiosity. While some might find it creepy going into a cemetery, I find it historically intriguing since each person in there had a deep story until the ultimate final conclusion that comes for us all. During one random Sunday, I was invited to the Nossa Senhora of Brazil Church. I have rarely gone and stayed for a full religious gathering, and especially one for the Catholic Church of Brazil. The church itself was incredibly artistic and beautiful in its own way. My date chose this church because it was higher up in the socioeconomic class compared to other churches in Sao Paulo. Most Brazilians in Sao Paulo will recommend visiting Beco do Batman or the Batman alleyway at least once. It's a very hipster alleyway with trinkets for sale, lots of graffiti to take selfies with, and live music to spice up your day. At night, the main street gets packed for drinking and socializing on the street. One night, I was invited to visit the bar district near Faria Lima Metro Station. The street was lined with friends drinking away and puffing the green without any concerns. Almost every bar here offered a delicious caipirinha and your typical pub crawl-like atmosphere while still feeling safe. Now, if you ever visit Brazil, you need to try a caipirinha. Typically, it's a cocktail using a strong spirit, such as vodka or cachaça, which is a typical Brazilian alcohol. Then you throw in a bunch of ice and a fruit such as lemon, limes, strawberries, blueberries, kiwis, or any other assortments of fruits. One place I really recommend visiting in Sao Paulo is the Esquina do Salsa restaurant, which features over 40 different types of caipirinhas. Highly recommended. Almost in the very center of Sao Paulo is the massive Parque Ibirapuera. I visited here a handful of times during my three months in Sao Paulo. It's a massive expanse of parks, lakes, and greenery. Here you'll find locals jogging and biking around, while various ducks lounge around in various lakes. It's not the most beautiful park in Sao Paulo, but it's safe and it gives people a small bit of greenery in this grey concrete jungle. While staying in the Pergizi neighborhood, I decided to walk into a giant walled-off compound of Parque Agua Branca. You are transported into a 1905 version of Sao Paulo with colonial-like houses, small lakes, and ducks running around on all sides. Built for agricultural research, it's now perfect for a casual walk around its old historic architecture and atmosphere. One Sunday, I was invited to walk around Parque do Povo. Here, thousands of people were lounging and relaxing on the grass, both families and friends alike, with hundreds of cyclists riding around on the bike tracks. Make sure to grab a coconut while you're here. A bit further out of the city is the Botanical Gardens of Sao Paulo. I came here on a rainy day, but was nonetheless very impressed with how well the garden was designed and maintained. Looking on the map of Sao Paulo is simply a sliver of green nature and a sea of grey concrete. This park is very photogenic, so I recommend coming here for a nice photo session. The Museu da Casa Brasileira, or Brazilian House Museum, was a spontaneous museum I decided to visit with a friend before closing hours. As the name implies, it features furniture and other artifacts from previous generations of wealthy Brazilians. The most interesting parts were the photos of Sao Paulo from 70 to 100 years ago, when it was still dominated by swamps, forests, bushes, and ranches. 
Within the Estação da Luz, or Light Station, is an interesting dive into the Brazilian Portuguese language. If you are a nerd about anthropology and sociology, then this museum is for you. Unfortunately, the museum is almost entirely in Portuguese, but you might still pick up some pieces of extremely rich and diverse Brazilian history and culture. Also just across the street from Light Station, the Pinacoteca of Sao Paulo Museum features more contemporary Brazilian art. While this museum is probably one of the most important in the city, I found it the least interesting overall, since it was mostly contemporary art. Fun fact, in 2008, burglars broke in and stole four paintings, including a Picasso painting. Also within walking distance from Lou Station, although I would not recommend walking in this area, is the Memorial da Resistencia Museum, or the Museum of Resistance. The first floor of the museum is dedicated to the resistance against the Brazilian dictatorship from 1964 to 1985. The information is primarily in Portuguese, so read up on the dictatorship before visiting. On higher floors are further contemporary art exhibits. And for a bonus art exhibit, you can visit the Tomi Otake Institute, which features constantly changing contemporary artwork. When I went, it was partially dedicated to feminist, indigenous, and Brazilian African art pieces. For anyone visiting Sao Paulo, you probably won't miss Avenida Paulista, which would be considered the absolute downtown of Sao Paulo. Here you will find various museums, large retail stores, and an interesting paradox of both homeless and working class walking around. If you manage to find some photos of old Sao Paulo through your Sao Paulo journey, the stark contrast of this street in the past is eye-opening. The Museum of Art Sao Paulo is right in the heart of Avenida Paulista, and the top floor features some beautiful paintings and art. Some of it historical, some of it contemporary, some of it Brazilian, and some of it European. On the back of each painting is a detailed explanation of the artist and the context of the art piece. Just across the street from the Museum of Art São Paulo is a tiny little park you can stroll through safely. The density of the trees blocks out the view of the surrounding city, but I would still recommend something to block out the noise of the city. Also, there are a few photos of how São Paulo looked several generations ago, which you may find intriguing. The Japan House of São Paulo is less a museum and more an interesting contemporary Japanese art exhibit and shop. Here you can buy Japanese goods such as expensive sake. It's a nice place for a casual visit while walking around Avenida Paulista. Another interesting aspect of São Paulo is the Japanese district of Liberdade. Back in 1912, about 300 Japanese immigrants arrived here due to the political and economic climate of Japan. The area continued to evolve over time into a bustling cultural zone with dozens of Japanese-inspired shops and restaurants. I visited here several times to buy some novel Japanese foods and drinks, especially the imported Japanese sake. I recommend coming here on the weekend for the Japanese-inspired food market. Within walking distance of the Japanese Liberdade district, you'll find the Sao Paulo Metropolitan Cathedral. The cathedral that you see was built from 1913 until 1954. Once you go inside, you can visit the catacombs underneath the cathedral, which have existed since the inception of Sao Paulo in 1589. In these catacombs, various historical officials of the Portuguese Catholic Church are buried. Keep in mind, be careful outside the church, because there are large numbers of homeless, so be very mindful and vigilant. And there's also, if you decide to go to a little amusement park, there's a little amusement park called Hopi Hari, which is about one and a half hours away. You have to book your tickets in advance. And if you like to go on a couple roller coasters here and there, it's a fun little experience. It's not as big as some other roller coaster places, perhaps in the US, perhaps in Canada, but it's a little adventure if you're willing to do that.
And if, for example, there's too much concrete for you and the city's a little bit overwhelming, but yet you're still gonna end up staying here for quite some time, then you can also take a one and a half hour bus outside of the city to a place called Guaraja or Santos, which is the beach area on the coast of Brazil. And it's actually probably the closest beach that you can get to Sao Paulo. It's not that far really. And once you go there, you can go ahead on the beach on the sand. Some of the beaches are a little bit more dirty because they do release the sewage into the ocean itself. But some of the beaches are more clean because there's not that much sewage coming from the city. So if you do decide to go on a little adventure, they can also go to those areas on the coast of Brazil, which is only about an hour and a half by bus from Sao Paulo. And there's also another location called Paranapiacaba, and it's a colonial town of Brazil that was developed around 200 years ago. It's a train station village. And if you go there and you decide to get really, really adventurous, there's a bridge that you can try to cross, which I really don't recommend you cross if you're not a risk taker. Uh, because it is very dangerous, you could potentially die. But if you decide to cross it because you're an adrenaline junkie, then you can try to cross this bridge that has not been used in a very long time, and it could potentially be a risk-taking adventure as well for a little bit of that adrenaline. All right, what up? Leo here, and I'm on the dangerous bridge here in Paranapiacaba in Brazil, and we're gonna go ahead and cross it. Should be fun. So we just have to walk across this whole thing, just like what we saw in the movie squid games of course looks like we can just cheat the whole system and uh, it's pretty dangerous but maybe not such a good idea all right so it's a little bit more dangerous than I thought it's pretty much broken and it's a free fall all the way down so the reason that's so dangerous is that because there's a free fall and the wood is a little bit uh, rotted because this bridge was built quite a long time ago. So technically, if you crossed it as quickly as possible without thinking about it, you could probably do it. And welcome back. We have arrived back at camp. Perhaps next time we'll cross that bridge, but for now, not today. As far as, let's say, restaurants and places to eat, places to drink, places to essentially grab yourself some food. Obviously, it's a massive city, 12 million people, and there's gonna be an overabundance of places to go eat, restaurants all over the place. There's obviously Japanese food, there's obviously Korean food, there's tons of vegan food as well. So once again, I'm a vegan, and there's an overabundance of vegan food. A lot of the vegan food here, if you use Uber Eats, are just delivery only. So this is a new concept called ghost kitchens, and Sao Paulo has an abundance of those because you can simply order the food. But when I did try visiting some of these restaurants, or at least their location on the map, I discovered that they don't actually have a place to sit down. You can only order the food there. While there is an abundance of places to eat and an abundance of Brazilian food to try, I mostly ordered food to myself using Uber Eats because if you want to go anywhere here in the city, you really need to walk either a lot, you need to take the public transit, or you need to take an Uber pretty much everywhere. So instead of doing that, I decided to simply order the majority of my food to my apartment with Uber Eats. Once in a while, I would cook, but for the last two months or so, I would just order the food through Uber Eats. It's very inexpensive, relatively speaking. And if you're a foreigner, the Brazilian people are very, very, very friendly to you as a foreigner because you are essentially a novelty. I'm not too sure how they are towards all foreigners, but as myself, very, very friendly. I always ask questions to the taxi drivers. I always ask questions to the police, to whoever I'm able to communicate with in a very basic Portuguese. I enjoy communicating with them and they always typically like to share their opinions on whether it's politics, whether it's the economic situations here in Brazil, whether it's history. Everyone has an opinion that they would love to share. And if you come in with an open mind, if you like to listen to what they have to share, then I highly, highly recommend it. So now one of the darker sides of Sao Paulo is that 
When I first arrived here in to my apartment, my landlord was showing me the apartments and then he explained to me that the previous tenant was upset because he basically one evening was hanging out outside the apartment and he was actually standing outside the gate that protects anyone from coming into the apartment itself. So if you live here in Sao Paulo, almost every single apartment building has a security guard protecting the entrance of the apartment itself. And this tenant was standing outside of that at 2 or 3 a.m. in the morning, smoking a cigarette and chatting on his phone. And at one particular moment, an iFood motorcycle pulls up. So an iFood is like an Uber Eats motorcycle, someone who, who brings your delivery, pulls up next to him, pulls out a gun and says, give me all of your money. Now, this was obviously not an iFood guy. This was obviously not an Uber Eats guy, but this tenant ultimately got robbed. Everything was taken from him. His phone, his wallet, everything that he had with him was taken. All right, so a couple things that I'd like to also mention is that the amount of noise here in Sao Paulo is really high. So if you're gonna look into renting an apartment here in Sao Paulo, make sure to ask the landlord if the apartment itself is near any construction. Because unfortunately, both apartments that I rented here both have a lot of noise next to it due to construction, due to new apartment blocks being built next to them. And this construction, these new apartments are not going to finish anytime soon. So you're looking at around two or three years before the buildings are complete. So the first apartment that I had had two new apartments being built right next to it. And despite me living on the 17th floor of my apartment, the noise was still able to leak through the windows. Not that much, but then the second apartment that I managed to rent, I was living on the fourth floor and right beside of the apartment was another apartment building being built, hence the concrete jungle, because everywhere you see, it's not trees that are going up, it's actually more apartment buildings. So the amount of noise that is occurring anywhere from 8 a.m. until maybe 6 p.m. is overwhelming. It was difficult to sleep sometimes, so maybe you could potentially see the bags under my eyes, but it was quite an overwhelming experience to have drilling and trucks and beeping all from 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. And sometimes even the apartment itself would shake just from the amount of construction that was going on. Another thing I'd like to mention is that be mindful when you're walking around here in Sao Paulo, especially at nighttime, especially in the center, because you will see some pretty wild things. For example, I saw one guy who was basically perhaps on drugs, basically in his underwear, just running around from street to street. He was unfortunately on some form of drugs, you could tell by the, the look. And as well, there are some streets that you really, really want to avoid going down. If you are interested to see the catastrophe, the catastrophe of a civilization, something that is very difficult to fix of the homelessness crisis here, then check out Estação Luz, so Luz Station, Light Station. And there's two museums there, which is one is the Museo da Resistencia, the Museum of the Resistance, when Brazil was a dictatorship. But at the same time, there's also another museum just further down the street. But if you go down the opposite direction, you're going to find this Cracolangio there, and you're going to find an abundance of these homeless individuals there. But the interesting situation is that this situation is spread out through the entire city. Fortunately, they don't bother you, especially during the daytime, they won't bother you, but be very mindful, especially during the evenings. Anything after 10 p.m. perhaps is when you really want to be careful for any belongings that you have. So every Brazilian will tell you don't flash anything of value, don't flash your phones, don't flash your camera, don't flash any jewelry, because these things are prime targets for getting robbed, unfortunately. And also be mindful that even if you are vigilant about everything, you will perhaps encounter a situation where someone perhaps pulls up on a motorcycle and then you run into a situation where you do get robbed. The current economic situation here in Brazil is, is really bad for the Brazilian people. Anyone who's earning in the Brazilian real is not necessarily earning that much money. So as a foreigner, because I earn in US dollars, the US dollar right now compared to the Brazilian real is very good. In the wealth category, if you're coming here with US dollars, if you're earning money in US dollars, then this is a fantastic place because everything is relatively inexpensive for an expat. If you are a Brazilian, obviously the Brazilian real is very, very weak right now compared to the US dollar. But as a foreigner, as an expat, as a digital nomad, it's a fantastic place because your money goes quite a long way here. While Brazilians would say that Sao Paulo is a relatively expensive city to be in, because you're earning in US dollars, it's pretty good. 
but for the most part, things here were very, very inexpensive. And even the Ubers here were very, very inexpensive. So for example, a 40 minute Uber ride, which is what I took to get to this particular museum, cost only about $6. The exchange rate makes things so affordable for a potential digital nomad. So as far as the relationship category, there are particular foreigner groups here that you can join to meet the locals as well as foreigners if you want. I joined the groups just to receive any information that I had, any particular questions, then I would simply ask in the group and everyone in the group would have some recommendations. So if you have any questions as far as the Sao Paulo city is concerned, then you can definitely ask in these foreigner groups. One group that I recommend is the Sao Paulo foreigner group. You can simply look up on Facebook. But as far as meeting any of the locals or meeting any of the foreigners just to chill, I didn't do any of that. I would mostly go on dates from online dating apps such as Tinder or Bumble or even the Facebook dating app. And I would go on these dates and along the way, we would go on different adventures to different restaurants or bars or locations or museums. And this was a fantastic, fantastic way to explore more of the city than I think perhaps most locals would even be aware of knowing here. So even a friend of mine who's lived here for five months knows less of the city than I do simply because I put myself out there to meet people through the dating apps, but at the same time being able to explore these new locations that I haven't known about previously or were perhaps way further out of the way than you would expect. So once again, you have two options here. You can either meet people through whatever Facebook or Instagram or language exchanges, of course, through meetup.com, or you can go on dating apps and go on little adventures. If you're content as a digital nomad or entrepreneur with basically chilling at home, and then on the occasion going on little adventures through whatever means that you decide to use, then Sao Paulo has a lot of opportunity for exploring and scratching that dopamine slash serotonin happiness thing inside you. But the one thing is that everywhere you go, you need to have some form of transportation. It's not a walkable city at the least. Number one, because things here are very far in between. And number two is that there is a safety concern here. So once again, if you're content with staying within your own little bubble for the most part, and then going on little adventures here and there, wonderful city, no complaints there. But at the same time, it can be a little bit isolating if you are the type of person that likes to just go out to little coffee shops here and there, because for the most part, you do need to make an endeavor to go to most of these locations because things are very, very spaced out. And at the same time, you will be spending quite a bit of money on going from point A to point B. So for example, every month here, I would spend $200 minimum on Ubers, simply going from point A to point B because nothing was really walkable. On the occasion, I would take the Metro, which was an interesting experience as well but for the most part it was ubers here and there and then at the same time i wouldn't cook for myself so i would get the uber eats and basically avoid going the long distances to go for restaurants but for the most part if you're okay with isolating yourself then it's a decent place to chill in for the amount of time that you decide to stay here as well but otherwise sao paulo as far as a livable city I wouldn't say it's so much livable compared to a city like Curitiba. So if you want a city to live in, I would recommend more Curitiba, especially if you're a digital nomad. But if you want a city where you can do a lot, a lot of things, a lot of places to go to museums, a lot of different parks to visit, a lot of things that you can go see outside the city as well, a lot of novel experiences. If you like the fascination of living in a massive, massive city, then Sao Paulo is Fascinating. I mean, it's really recommended if, if you want to live at like the absolute pinnacle of living in a concrete jungle with an abundance of things to do, an opportunity to meet dozens, if not hundreds of people on a regular basis. And obviously, if you have the money to spend on Ubers and Uber Eats, and if you're okay with a little bit of a precarious safety situation, then Sao Paulo is definitely something that you could potentially check out. Once again, Leonidas here coming in from Sao Paulo. And I hope to see you in the next video. Salute.